so guys welcome to this video uh, this is basically a video about uh, how to analyze the Odon dam for the stability criteria and stability conditions so let me just get it quickly packed up all and just start with the dam itself initially as you can see I am having the dam over here the dam profile adds 81.5 meter and this part is the core of the dam and these are all the berms so what I initially did is that I drew the phreatic line and how I drew the phreatic line is uh, you can check out the I actually use an excel for that purpose uh, coordinates of phreatic line so I actually had a coordinates of uh, the phreatic line calculated prior to the design, uh, the creation of phreatic line on this, and as you can see over here, these are the coordinates of phreatic line. How I calculated it is a formula that is based on Excel. Okay, actually the formula is over here. Yeah. Now, uh, for S, uh, now how you get S is that S is a uh, 15.62 L. So let's get started with a a S firstly. Mm, I think something is turned off. I need to turn on zero. Okay. Uh, okay. Nothing much is needed right now. So what you have, what we having is that uh, this is the water level of the dam, and this is the core of the dam which we transfer up. This is D. And after we transfer G towards the up, uh, towards the water level, it becomes point H. And now we are having another relation that is uh, H A is uh, uh, A B is point for three times H B. So what we do is that we divide this, uh, we drop a line from here, uh, which is at a distance from A B distance is calculated from the distance uh, H B. So that is AB is equal to point uh, three times HP. <coughs> so I've actually marked the point A over here, and what I do next is that I just uh, transfer this point over here for determining the dielectric. Uh, so now let's get started with the parabola parameter. So what we have done is that initially the length uh, AB is transferred and uh, we create an arc over here which meets up the water line over water surface over there so you can see A is the center and A is the center and F is the with AF as the radius I have uh, drawn an arc that meets up this water level water level line over here and once that line meets over here I actually drop up a perpendicular which is M D this MD acts as a directrix for this uh, uh, parabola uh, geometry over here. So now what I do is I take the midpoint over here. That is, I simply divide these uh, FD line into two parts. Uh, that is S and add a midpoint C. So I get a midpoint C in the in, in between. And since you can see uh, my dimensions, uh, S is 15.62. Uh, so S by 2 is 78.7.81. So after this, what I do is I've prepared this. Uh, uh, this is all wrong here. All right, see, this is all a mistake. So what I do is that uh, S is 15.62 from here. We got this from geometry, and the next part is I use this formula for this. Uh, this is basically you can see is uh, S square minus uh, Y square divided by two times two S. That is, you can get a simple formula, a parabola. That is a uh, uh, equation for parabola. And what you can see is that I've actually uh, taken different values of y and then taken different values of y and then uh, just drag this formula downward to get the corresponding value of x. And what I've done over here is I just concatenated these two values by using this formula. Just concatenate x comma y and then I just got these points. So now I need to plot on these points. Now I'll just copy these points from here. Control C and then 
over here I need to uh, firstly uh, let me tell about you about the uh, origin here as we are considering these to be the directrix this is the focus of parabola and this shall be the vertex of the parabola so over here uh, our parabola should actually meet at point C so what I'm gonna do now is that uh, I'll initially I'll fix up my UCS over here like that is I'll just uh, tell AutoCAD that my uh, origin lies over here so this towards the right is x and up is y done once i'm done with this uh, what i'll do is i'll just give a pl command and then space the value here's the line oh, i need to copy these again pl and over here I click it. so you can see the entire parabola is drawn these uh this this line is automatically plotted by point by point like all these uh, small small points are been automatically plotted and this meets exactly at a so actually i have drawn this uh, initially what i'll do is i'll just uh, turn on the phreatic line so as you can see uh this is the original phreatic line that continues over from here but uh as this is just a shell part, I need to make a correction for this and I had to introduce uh, to convert this uh, parabola and uh, meet it perpendicularly in the hurting of the dam or the dam. So once I am done with the parabola and the phreatic line and now I can start with the now I can start with the uh, determination of the uh, point O from where I will be drawing the slip circle. So now what I'll be doing is that I'll be casting off an angle of 22 degree from here and an angle of 30 degree approximately from here. The angle is actually determined from these two lines. So I'll be casting off a line, uh, two lines from here. They'll be meeting at a point P over here as you can see. I've actually done this already. So I'm just uh, giving you a tutorial about how I actually did that. What next is that I'll be uh, taking an offset of this line which is which will, shall be equal to the edge itself. And then uh, from here, I'll be dropping a perpendicular and taking it 4.5 times to the towards the left. Well, it's actually from over here. And the next part, I'll, what I'll be doing is that I'll be joining the point P and the point Q to a straight line. And then, and then the, that line shall be the uh, locus on which my point O shall be lying. Anywhere on that line, it actually uh, let me turn it on. Mm, locus. So as you can see, uh, I told you that uh, this is angle 25 degree and this is angle 30, uh, 30 degree. And this is a perpendicular that I actually dropped from here. And this is just off the line. So now I managed to Q from here which is equal to 4.5 times H. Uh, now this is the locus of stream slip circle. So it meets this line and uh, I took point Q a bit really at any point. And what I do it do uh, the next is that. I actually uh, plotted the downstream circle. So as you can see, I actually casted off an arc from the center. I actually took the radius as this point O and this toe as the radius and I just casted an arc over this entire earthen dam. So the next part what I did is I'll just isolate this stuff. I don't need this at the moment. Let me hide these as well. Hide objects and uh, these parts. Okay, I'll let them be here at the moment. What I did next is that I actually uh, took this arc and using the divide command, divide command, and I divided these arc into uh, four segments. As you can see uh, over here, I'll just erase the P type so that you can see it properly. P type. Okay. Uh, I'll take it this so that you can see the highlights. These are the points where my arc. Th this arc is actually divided into four equal parts. You can see these are the four equal parts that the arc has been divided into. So I'll just turn off the P type and do a normal point so that it doesn't become any obstruction. So what next I did is that I actually dropped a few perpendiculars and let them meet the um, borderline of this dam and over here and similarly for other other areas what next is that uh, I actually uh, needed the center I took the uh, uh, took the center of these arc 
and uh, these are the perpendiculars that would represent the weight of the arc uh, weight of the uh, slice of these as you can see these are the slices of the slip circle this arc is actually the slip circle and these one two three four are the arc uh, are these slices that uh, we shall be analyzing to uh, determine the stability of this slip circle of this other dam so what next is uh, let me just get these stuff back and object isolation so as you can see uh, these angles and all have been calculated from this point as a center point over as a center now what I did was that I actually hit this point again so that it doesn't become a problem for me what I did was this uh, I actually uh, turned off this layer as well because I wasn't needing this any longer and uh, this part was also not needed so I just kept the phreatic line mm, so I don't need this line uh, also this one okay uh, that's a lot so I'll just hide this as well isolate hide done so I had this slip circle this phreatic line uh, this uh, the line that differentiate the hardening and the shell as well as the I, don't know, I won't be needing this this pieces anymore I'll just turn them delete them off for a while so what I did next was that I actually found the uh, areas of these parts so basically what I did was that hatching so as you can see over here this is the foundation that has been colored as foundation over here this is the shell above phreatic line as you can see this is the phreatic line it means phreatic line is basically a line that divide that uh, divides the uh, area into two parts like as you can see this line is passing as as a parabola from this point to this here so it can be inferred as that this is the dry portion and this is the wet portion of the dam so uh, the next part this is a, as you can see shell below phreatic line so this is the wet shell and now let's head towards the core core above phreatic line you can see the small part of the core that is above phreatic line which is expected to be uh, dry and this is the core below phreatic line so what I did next was that I had prepare, actually prepared an uh, gas slope calculation uh, excel sheet which was actually which actually required me to feed in the areas and the weights mm, these are the unit weights of the uh, shell and pore as well as core and then uh, this is actually based on formulas I just need to feed in the areas like the uh, submerged section below phreatic line so what I did is that I want the sub area of submerged section so uh, it's below phreatic line so this is the shell what I'll be doing is I just click on the hatch pattern and press li equals and it will be taking a little time and this gives me the area 131.321 Eight one. So uh, let me check it over here. One thirty one point. This is the uh, slice number four. One thirty one point three two eight. So in this way, I actually calculated the area of each and every slice. And uh, based on the formulas and the condition, I actually uh, made a complete Excel sheet for that purpose. And uh, the as you can see over here, these are the wet section, uh, dry section, wet section, and then this first is the uh, calculation of downward ex uh, acting forces then the cohesive forces then the tangential slipping forces these two are actually the um, what do you call it the restoring forces as uh, so this one is the disturbing force so what I actually did is that at the end I made the numerator and the denominator because I wanted to find out the stability ratio that is uh, the stabilizing forces upon the stabilizing forces so the ratio come came about to be 1.91 so this is how I used AutoCAD uh, for the area estimation and determination of stability of an earthen dam using the phreatic line and the uh, graphical method of Swedish slip circle so uh, actually initially this was done using the graph paper and uh, the planimeter which was used for determining the areas uh, actually uh, by using the AutoCAD I actually eliminated the uh, use the need for having a planimeter so the next part is that I had as a university requirement 
uh, as per the university requirement I had to plot this on graph paper so I had another trick which I use and that's a complete new topic for another video so uh, this is what I did and it saved me a lot of time as well as efforts and and uh, because this is uh, what uh, this is a concept that is based on uh, trial and error and it really becomes difficult to do all this stuff on paper especially when you have limited resources and limited time so I hope this okay so another part over here is that uh, about the uh, cohesion forces uh, we need to calculate the length of arcs traditionally what is done is that uh, the radius uh, this suppose this is the radius and this is multiplied by the angle subtended by the arc so what I have done over here is that I used uh, since we are using AutoCAD itself over here so I actually got uh, it simple by just uh, let's by just using this command over here that says arc length so I just click on this arc over here and it gives me the length of the arc so it's a 12.54 and similarly I got the, the other lengths over here that's 12.26.53 uh, 26.59 you can see these all are not sim uh, not equal because the it depends on the area that uh, the or depends on the length and the type like over here you can see it's the uh, Sharon foundation that is uh, below phreatic line here it's the core it's the core again and it's the foundation over here in this part so 44.45 foundation 44.45 uh, foundation and over here it's distributed in two parts and over here it's again distributed in two parts so I just uh, took the lens and I pasted over here okay it's over here and these are the factors of uh, coefficient uh, cohesion and then by just using a formula I got the uh, cohesion uh, total cohesive forces that are acting on the the total cohesive forces that are acting on this surface the curved surface or the slip surface so it is simple that uh, how we can calculate use AutoCAD for basic calculation stuff and you can see the ratio comes about 1.91 which says that it's safe even here I have used the logical statements so uh, in this way we can just uh, as I have done this for the downstream side the similar stuff is done for the upstream side so I hope this video was useful to you and uh, you might have learned something Thank you for watching and uh, so feel f and just subscribe to my channel if you're watching this for the first time. Thanks to you.